Squamish Christian Fellowship Solid Worship. I hope that you are doing well today and I pray that you are safe despite of the uh, cases right, keep rising here in British Columbia. And as we continue to worship God and uh, serve Him and honor Him with your time this evening, I pray that you will be blessed by our worship. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this wonderful day, this wonderful night that you have given us. Uh, thank you for keeping us safe. It's been a year, almost more than a year that we are doing online worship and uh, we have this COVID. But you are faithful to us every day. And you are always there providing for us, doing miracles for us. And we just want to honor you and uh, give thanks to you, O God, and as we meditate your words this evening, may you open our hearts and minds, and may we see your works, see your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Jesus was, uh, he, he appeared for his, uh, to his disciples for uh, two times after uh, his resurrection, and in John chapter 21, it, it is his third appearance to his disciples. So uh, the disciples were still uh, afraid. Uh, Jesus told them to have peace. Jesus uh, gave them the Holy Spirit. We talked about it uh, two Saturdays ago. And uh, in, in John chapter 21, the disciples will be going to fishing. Right, so uh, Peter, he is a fisherman with other uh, three disciples. So in, in verse twenty one, it says, "Afterward, Jesus appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee." It happened this way: Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, the sons of uh, uh, seventy, and the two other disciples were together. And he said, "I'm going out to fish." Peter said. And they said, we will go with you. So they went out and go, got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. These are uh, professional uh, fishermen. They, they know what they're doing. So, but, but at the end of the night, they've got nothing. Early in the morning, in verse 4, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus because it was still dark. It was dawn. And he called out to their friends, Haven't you any fish? And they said, No. And verse 6, he said, Throw your net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. Remember, they are almost in the shore. And they were done fishing the whole night. They, they, they know the time. They know where to catch the fish. But after all, the whole, after... Uh, the, the whole night of fishing, they caught nothing. So, so Jesus was there. They did, not, they did not realize that it was Jesus. But still, Jesus told them to throw the net into the right side of the boat. And when they did, look at this. They were unable to hold the net because of the large number of fish. And because of that, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Peter realized that, that when, when Peter heard that it was Jesus, what did Peter do? He jumped out of the boat. He was naked. He, he, he got his, his uh, clothes. He jumped out of the boat. Maybe was he afraid of Jesus? I think no, he was not afraid. But maybe he was shy of Jesus. Why? Because remember, after Jesus, before Jesus died, Peter denied him three times. And, and, and uh, probably Peter is so guilty. We'll talk about Peter next Saturday. We'll talk about uh, how Jesus redeemed him. But here, Jesus told them, Jesus gave them a mandate to 
to throw the net in their right side. But, uh, in the right side of the boat. And when they did, they got, they got, they hold a net that is full of large number of fish. And, and when, when they done, the other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net of fish. They were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards that is so near the shore. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said, bring some of the fish that you caught and let's have some breakfast. And then the, 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 the Bible says, it was full of large fish, 153. And uh, even they got so many fish, that net was not torn. It was not broken. And Jesus said to them, Can ha come and have breakfast. And no one asked Jesus who it was done. It was still dark and no one asked Jesus who he was. Because they know it is the Lord, it is him. Because oh, it, it is only Jesus who can make miracles. It's, it is only Jesus make, who can make empty net into full of large number of fish let's go back to the whole story let let let's digest the story these are professional fishermen they know how to fish they know what they're doing but at the whole night of fishing they caught nothing and here comes jesus in the morning early in the morning here comes jesus when he came, he told them, he gave them a mandate to put, to throw the net in the right side of the boat. If you're a fisherman, you know, you know, your, you know, you have your style, you have your, your technique in fishing, you have your habit, you know where to fish, you know how to fish, and you know that it is almost done for you because it is all, all, already morning and and you know the timing to go fishing. But you caught nothing. But these disciples, when they heard someone, remember they did, they did not know that it was Jesus, but they heard someone told them that to throw the net in the right side of the boat, and they did. And they caught so many fish. And then they realized that it was Jesus. From M net into a full of fish not just fish but large fish when Jesus appeared when Jesus came into the story they got a a boat sinking load of fish because Jesus is there and because Jesus was the one who told them to throw the net. We've been working so hard we, even in our entire lives. We're, we keep on uh, working hard because maybe we are well educated. Maybe we know something. But still, sometimes it's not enough. But still, sometimes we get uh, empty hands at the end of the day. Not, 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 just, not just us who, who makes minimum wages, but, but even the, the, the people who earn so much, at the end of the day, they are empty. And these people, these fishermen, they were professional. They are professionals. They know how to fish. But at the end of the night, they went to the shore without any fish in their nets. In their net. But Jesus came and he showed that when Jesus is with them, that when Jesus is with them, when the presence of God, when the presence of Jesus is with them, even the empties, the empty net can become a full of large fish. Do you still believe in miracles do you still believe that god that jesus can turn our empty bottles into a full of lemonade 
Do you still believe that the things that we are experiencing right now, God can turn them into blessings? Do you still believe that that your sickness right now can will result into something that you will be thankful? When Jesus came into the story, when when they gave their effort, they worked so hard, it was still empty, but when Jesus came, when Jesus came, God provided. They caught a large number of fish. And it says the other boat went to, to that boat, to, to the boat that has the net, to help them and bring it into the shore. I watched, uh, if, you know, if you're not familiar, there, there is a, a comedian in the Philippines and his name is uh, Jobbert, Kuya Jobbert. Everyone... Uh, calls him, his uh, a screen name is Kuya Jobbert. In fact, he lives here in Canada. He is a, 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 a permanent resident of, of Canada, but he is in the Philippines. And this guy is in, an, this guy lives in, in, from nothing, as in he lives in a jeepney, in, in his jeep, he lived there, he has nothing. And then he got famous because of his jokes, of cursing people, of bad jokes, of dirty jokes. And because he's a comedian, he became famous. He earned a lot of money. And he started to buy drugs and use drugs. And he said he, he even tried to jump from a building to kill himself because... He, he, he said that, that Satan is speaking to him to kill himself, that he is a sinful man, that he is nothing, and it is better to him for him to jump from a building. And I saw that interview with Tony Gonzaga, a, a Filipino artist, which is also a medalist, in, in Tony Talks, and Jobert said, Great Jobert said, Despite of the fame that he had, the money, the earnings that he had, the most important thing that happened to his life is to meet Jesus Christ as his, as his Lord and Savior. And what makes me uh, really amazed when I watch that uh, 28 minutes uh, video interview is that he said, we are investing things in this world. We are investing houses and cars and money and fame in this world. But all these things are just temporary. The most important thing is to be in the presence of God. The most important thing that happened into his life is that he met Jesus. From an empty life, he has money, but he feels empty. He has a fame. He is known in the Philippines, but he feels empty. And he's still looking for drugs. He used drugs. He became an addict. He, he, he tried to kill himself because he, feel, he felt that he is empty. But when he met Jesus... He lost money, he lost uh, things, but when he met Jesus, he said his life has been fulfilled. And he feels that he has everything right now. He doesn't have jokes anymore, bad jokes anymore. He's not cursing anymore in the jokes. And he lost some uh, shows because of this. He lost some followers. Because of this. But he said, my life is full because of Jesus. When the disciples catch, tried to catch fish, it was just them. They were professionals, but still they caught nothing. Their nets were empty. 
and Jesus appeared and Jesus told them and they followed Jesus and it resulted into a net breaking full of large number of fish. So what is the key? What is the key? It doesn't mean that if you know something you will be you will become successful. It doesn't know it doesn't mean that if you have everything you will have that that fulfillment in life. When Jesus came they got a large number of fish. Because when we have Jesus we might lose jobs, we might get sick, we might lose something important or something that we are enjoying with our, in our lives. But as long as we have Jesus, as long as we have God, we are full and we are filled with love from God. And look at this, when they landed, they saw a fire with what? With fish and bread in the with the fire burning coals and there was a fish and there was there were uh, there were fish and bread Jesus prepared breakfast for them <laughs> because Jesus knew that they were tired they were sleepy they were hungry that's why they went for fishing they were hungry and Jesus still provided for them Remember, the disciples were hiding, right? They were afraid because of the, 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 the Jewish leaders that uh, killed Jesus, though they were afraid that they will be next. So they were hiding. When they go fishing, they go in the night. When they go to somewhere, they go in the night. They, caught, they, they went fishing. They caught nothing. When Jesus told them they caught large amount, when they went back to the shore, Jesus prepared a breakfast for them. And Jesus asked them, come, let's have some breakfast. Why? Because God, Jesus, is so concerned to us. Why? Because Jesus loved his disciples so much. Jesus gave his life for his disciples. Jesus gave his life for us. And when Jesus knew that these disciples were hungry and they got nothing for the le- for the whole night, he provided. And when they came into the shore and they, they, they're tired and wet and cold, Jesus provided a breakfast for them. What are you going through right now? What are your struggles? Do you feel empty? Do you feel nothing? Are your dreams broken? Are your goals uh, broken? Does it seem like things will, will not happen according to your plans or your dreams? Or there are things that are, are coming into your way so that you could fulfill your dreams and your, 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 your visions and, and the things that you want. Remember, even we get all the things that we want, we will still feel empty and nothing. But when Jesus will come into our lives, when Jesus will be part of our life, we will see the provision. We will see the true care that only God, that only Jesus can give to us. Brothers and sisters, as we end this evening, let us invite Jesus, let us invite God to be in our lives. You know, at the end of the day, we work so hard, we, we, we enjoy the life in this earth, but if we don't have God, we are all empty and we have nothing. But when we have Jesus, Even though we struggle, even though we have problems, God will never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. 
And He is always there in times of need. He is always there in times of help. When they caught nothing, Jesus came to give them to give them fish. When they were hungry uh, and, and tired of fishing, Jesus provided a breakfast for them. Brothers and sisters, let us come to God, especially in this time that we do not know what will happen tomorrow, that we do not know what will happen up in, in summer. We have the restrictions right now. Uh, uh, British Columbia is, is getting so much uh, cases and we have the travel restriction. We do not know it, if it will work or not. But the most important thing that we can have right now and we can be sure right now is that when we have Jesus and when we welcome Jesus into our lives, we have a house and a room in heaven. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, he said that, and he said, I will go to the Father and prepare you a room. Jesus did not just, this Jesus will not just provide for us. But the most important thing is that Jesus will prepare a room in heaven for you and for me. That is the most important thing that can happen into our lives. Even our prayers will not be answered. We will not get a job. We will not achieve our dreams. As long as we have Jesus, everything will be okay. God loves us and Jesus loves us so much. So as you go to your bed, as you rest for the rest of the night, may we all realize that we need the presence of God, the presence of Jesus into our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for your words. Thank you for this a uh, short message that reminds us that we are nothing. Reminds us that even we are professionals, that even we tried so hard, we are still empty. And we need you. We need you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. We need you in our personal life. We need you in our family. We need you in our job. We need you as the number one. Not number two, not number three, not after uh, we prioritize our families, not after we prioritize our jobs and careers, but we prioritize you first and you will do and give the rest. Lord Jesus, may you come into our lives. May your presence be with us every day. May we feel your presence every day. And may we seek you and may we come to you as you invite us into a breakfast. May we come nearer to you so that we can know you more and we can see you clearly that you are God, that you are our Lord, and you are our Savior. And as we welcome the new week of life, may you guide us, O God. May you keep us safe, and may we know you more day after day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us this evening, and I hope that you, are, you will have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you on Wednesday for our midweek worship and next Saturday for our Saturday worship. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Amen.